criticizing me, not after what you've been. It ain't what a prison has been, it's what they are. You used to be a soldier once, but what have you been ever since? Nothing but a souse. But ain't nothing but what you are. Shut your mouth, shut your mouth. Don't you be throwing that in my face. Ah, uh, get over that stew, will you? You're not even a good cook. Frankie. Where did it come from, Mark? I got it for you at Victor Brothers. It almost fits. But why, Mark? Graduation. Oh, gee, thanks. The old man soused again? Worse than ever. I get so worried sometimes I don't know how I stand. Supper's on. I ain't blind. Shall we go down and eat, Bar? Well, where did you get that hat? Mom bought it for me. It's for graduation. Yeah, that's where he got it. I bought it for him. He don't have to graduate in no hat. We can't spare the money. Seems like we got money for liquor. Oh. It's all right. It's all right. I'll take it back right away, I will. Yeah. You all right, Mom? Yeah, I'm all right. you go until you promise me that you'll do something tomorrow afternoon. Well, after all, you don't graduate every day of your life, you know. It's an event. You'll do all right, Miss Williams, without me. And besides, I can't do anything like those others. Well, I don't care if you just stand up when I call on you. The important thing is that you must take your place with them. You're going to have to do it later with a great many other people. Night, Miss Williams. Such a lovely time. Good night, Carol. And you make Frankie promise not to disappoint me. All right. Good night. Good night, Miss Williams. She's fine. Which way are you going, Carol? Mm hmm? Come on. Not till you promise. Look here, I'm not going to promise you or anybody else anything. Especially when I can't do anything. You're not mad at me. Of course not. You like me? Can you stop? But I like you, Frankie. I gotta go home. Good night, Frankie. Good night. with us, the President of our Board of Education, Mr. Hayes. Ladies and gentlemen, children, if I may obtrude the experience and observations of some years, which I choose to call 
packing one's trunk for the journey. Packing one's trunk for the journey. What's he talking about? If into one's trunk one will put enough self-discipline, strength of character, respect for law and order, then I assure you that each one of you shall find life a glorious and a happy adventure. Now, first, according to the plan we settled on last night, I should like to call upon John Shelley. Uh, it is John's plan to enter high school and subsequently to study law. What are you going to recite for us, John? Portia's courtroom speech from the Merchant of Venice. The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as a gentle rain from heaven. And earthly power doth then show like as God's when mercy seasons justice. And now, um, Wallace Kishler, determined to take his place in the world of art. Well, isn't that far? Looks like we might go right into the Wednesday night service, doesn't it? And now, oh, Robert Hale. Uh, Robert, after only brief study, has shown great promise in his chosen field, music. has a definite flair for mathematics, and he is, I believe, going to ask you some questions. How much is 11 times 12, John? 132. Carol, how much is 11 times 14? 154. How much is 11 times 18, Frankie? 198. Don't you see it's this way? It's just like my papa told me. When you work in a bank, you have to be quick at figures. I work in a bank every Saturday. Someday I'm going to run it. When you multiply by 11, you add the two outside figures and stick them in the middle. Uh, now we're going to hear from one of our girls. You know, in this modern world, girls have careers too. Carol Evans. Have you thought of something to do, Frankie?
recess, after which there will be refreshments, and you will receive your report cards and your certificates of graduation from grammar school. Well, Sheriff Kramer. Hi, Mr. Herzing. You should have been here sooner. Excellent entertainment. Excellent. Glad to see you, Sheriff. Ah, I do wish you'd seen the children. Frankie was fine today. You should have heard him play his harmonica. I didn't know you played the harmonica, Frankie. Do you? A little. <laughs> Well, won't you take a seat? <laughs> no, thank you, Miss Williams. But after school, would you mind dropping into my office? Well, I'd be glad to. And bring Frankie with you. Why, well, yes, of course. Thank you, Miss Williams. Where were you last night, Frankie? I was home. That's where I was. I was home, I was. What time did you get home? After I left Miss Williams' house. I was home all night. Hmm, I see. Frankie, I talked to your mother, and she said you didn't get home till 10 o'clock. What about that? Well, I waited a little while, that's all. Sure you didn't wait around Blair's hardware store? Sure you didn't break in and steal that harmonica? Did you, Frankie? I'm your friend. You can talk to me. Yes, I did. Why? Well, they wanted me to do something at school today, and that's about all I could do. I didn't have the money to buy one, and I saw that in the window on my way home. So I took it. What else did you take? You took some money out of the cash drawer, didn't you? Yes. How much? Seven dollars and eighty cents. I'm glad you weren't in court today, Miss William. To hear them Blair's talk, you'd think Frankie had committed murder or something. Every kid steals something, whether it's a watermelon or cherries on the trees next door. He has to steal something before he knows it's wrong. I'm sorry about the whole thing. Couldn't you do anything about it, Sheriff? No. I suppose you might say Frankie's going to have to pay for, well, you know... He lives on the other side of the tracks. Besides, he's been in trouble before and on probation. There's nothing can be done about it. I got to be going now. It's not far from 8.15. May I go to the station to see Frankie? Of course. Where is he now? I sent him home to see his mother, but he'll be there all right. That's what I think of the boy. Thanks for giving me the old man's suitcase, Mom. I wanted to say goodbye to him, but, well, he was asleep. Will you tell him, Mom? Goodbye, Frankie. Gee, I never noticed how pretty these flowers looked before. Well, except that rose bush over there. Kind of skinny, ain't it, Mom? Do something about that, will you, Mom? Where are you going, Frankie? I don't know. Say, now, there's a job for you. All a guy does is make a lot of dots and dashes. Do you understand it? No. Well, A is a dot and a dash, and B is a dash and three dots, and C is... Gee, I don't remember what C is. It's a cinch if you just learned how to make them dots and dashes. You shouldn't have come down here. Be a good boy, Frank. I'll write to you. And we'll be waiting to see you back here. This is where you belong. Oh, gee, thanks, Miss Williams. But what you gloomy about? You know I've never been on a train before? 
Every night when I'd hear them chug and whistle and go around the bend down there near Smith's Grove, I always wanted to be on one going someplace. And now I am going someplace, ain't I, Sheriff? And there'll be red plush cushions and everything. Won't there, Sheriff? Yeah, Frankie. Plush cushions and everything. Goodbye, Miss Williams. I haven't any tickets, Sheriff. Have you got them? Yes, I got your ticket, Frankie. Will you stop crying, Carol? I'll be back soon before you know it. I'm not going any place, just to a farm. I like to work on a farm. Someday I'll come back and you can't tell. Maybe someday I'll have a job like that guy in there. A cinch, that's all it is. Just a lot of dots and dashes. You'll get along all right in here, just as you want to. That's up to you. It's up to me to enforce the rules, and I do. You understand, don't you, Sheriff? Yes, I understand. You understand, don't you, Frankie? Yes, sir. All right, Sheriff. Is there anything I can do for you back there, Frankie? No, I don't think so, Sheriff. Gee, this is a swell place, ain't it? You a new guy? Yeah. Where are you from? I said, where are you from? That's none of your business. Oh, a wise guy, huh? That's my business. That's my business. difference in this joint. Listen, you. You're no better than any of the rest of them prisoners. If I put you in charge, it was to keep order up there. Listen to them bums walking around. They're scrubbing. All right, see that they scrub. And see that they scrub in their bare feet. From now on, no one puts their shoes on till noon. How do you think I'm going to sleep? There'll be trouble. Yeah, who's going to make it? Anyone tries it, you beat them within an inch of their life. You're big enough. All right. All right, you mug. Get your shoes off. Get them off. And from now on, keep them off till after 12 o'clock. Do you get it? Do you? Come on, snap into it. Oh, come on, come on, come on. All right, you guys, get them off. Get your shoes off now. Wake up. Get them shoes off in there. Come on, stupid. Wake up. Get them off. Come on, get along, bud. Hold through that shoe. 
Was it you? No. Just in case it was. longer about you, Rogers. <clears throat> no wooden? No. You can't steal automobiles and start riots and get away with it. You're a cinch to go up for five years. We'll know where to send your mail, all right. State penitentiary. I hate to think how much I'm going to miss you. And therefore... I sentence you, Frank Rogers, to the state penitentiary for five years. We're a thief. I ain't so sure. We're Frankie Pitchin, why not? He's a loser. Ah, what do you mean? He's got a fireball he'll be throwing past them all afternoon. Hey! Oh, no! Did you see that guy steal second? I didn't see nothing. I ain't no stew, I ain't. What do you want to steal things for? That's how I got here. Because they're getting three hits in five innings? You don't think I'm as dumb as that? You're swell. But they want you up in the office. Oh. Yeah, don't give them any fat ones. If they start clouding the plates, they'll write their heads. Good luck, Slim. That's right, Warden. I pitched five innings and I've done five years. So what? I haven't any respect for a man who gets a chance and doesn't know how to handle it. This is your chance now. Don't blow it. Don't worry, Warden. I won't. Get you salmon? Yeah. We're without music. Without? Well, we're leaving here tomorrow. We'll be low gone. Three weeks in Cleveland and we'll have a roll. I'm going to miss this joint. See you later. I'm going down and try on my suit. We've got ours all picked out. And yours won't fit any better. Yeah. Just three well-dressed men leaving store. That's not what's going out. Just three suits of old clothes. Look at it. You know what? What'd you like to do? I want a steak. I'd like to see some gal. What'd you like, Frankie? I just want to get rid of this bundle. Some collar buttons, a whole shirt, blazer. In five years.
should speak to you tonight of success. I have no patience with people who quarrel with their lot in life. I tell you I have no patience with people who quarrel with their lot in life. Because success, success after all, rests within yourself. It's well straight, ain't it? Yeah. It's got meat all around it. Take me, for example. When I was a little boy, I began by singing in the choir. And when the contribution box was passed, I gave. I tell you, I gave. I gave even of my pennies. What are we going to do with the dishes? Say, if I had a gun and you'd throw them up in the air, I could knock them off like clay pigeons. Well, you haven't got any, Rod, and you ain't going to have one. Well, I'm not going to wash them. Nobody asked you to. Say, I got an idea. Hmm? There's a joint down here I used to sing in. I'd like to make them a present. They don't care if they're washed or not. Anyway, I'd like a drink. Yeah, sure do I. Okay, Frankie? Anything. I just got to keep moving. So... For the last few years, well, what I mean to say is, he's been a guest of the government. But you wouldn't understand about that. <laughs> now I'm going to ask him to sing one of the old songs that he used to sing for me before he asked for a raise in pay. Ladies and gentlemen, I take great pleasure in introducing that marvelous singer of old songs, accompanied by the Silver Slipper singing waiters, and I want you to give him a great big hand, Mr. Burt Gallo. <laughs> Country gals I used to know For since I roamed 